Admiral's Log. Date, May 4th, 1901. It's already been more than a year since I started reshaping the Royal Navy. While our tally of ships is still a mere 12 battleships, those battleships have proven their worth. Unfortunately, the Malaya in the previous encounter did take a serious amount of damage and popped her turret. This is going to take some time to replace, but fortunately we are more than capable of doing that. The German Navy seems to rely upon a more diverse fleet than we do. They have half our number of battleships, but they have all manner of smaller ships to harass convoys, scout ahead, and defending their ports. My strategy right now is to force as many battleship versus battleship encounters as I can. I know my ships will come out ahead. Following the destruction of the German battleships, our soon-to-be-finished battleships will be capable of taking out the smaller ships with ease. I have also asked the Ship Design Bureau to consider a hybrid design of a battleship and a cruiser. I need something faster than a battleship, yet with more firepower than a cruiser, and hopefully they can come up with a new design soon. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to episode 4 of the UK campaign. We are currently operating all the way over in the Baltic Sea, where the Canada has encountered the battleship Wetton. Now this goes exceptionally well with my strategy of eliminating as many battleships as I can. So let's see if the Canada can take out the Wetton in a hurry. We've seen these guys before. They're fairly well equipped, these battleships of theirs, but they really shouldn't be that much of an issue. Now, um, one of the comments that I got a lot in the previous videos as I was looking to find the enemy, if you turn on the AI, if you don't know where the enemy is, your ships are just going to beeline for the enemy target. So even if you don't know where they are and you only got the enemy smoke spotted warning, then this is still going to tell you exactly where you need to go. You can see that the Canada is making some slight course corrections, and all of a sudden it finds the target. So, if you don't know where they are, just hit the AI control, give over your ship temporarily, and once you actually have spotted the enemy, you can easily take over control again by yourself. Now, the Canada is currently doing full speed. Um, I do have a fairly decent crew with the Stereoscopic Rangefinder 1. So, let's drop to... I think 14, 15 knots should be fine. We know that these German battleships are not particularly fast, and that means I can build up my accuracy, I can go broadside, and with my armor and my better guns, I can hopefully do more damage while taking less. The question remains, how good is their angle, though? That angle of approach, I think AP is just going to ding right off. Let's switch to HE. I don't believe we've seen the Canada before, but I could be wrong. Seeing as I... really? <laughs> Seeing as I have a few ships. Um, I had 12 ships, and then I had a few of them even in the dry docks, because some of them had taken a bit of damage. Say, like, uh, that battleship in the previous episode, which popped one of her turrets right off. The Malaya. Now, the Wetton over here, 19 knots. Pretty slow. Maximum amount of bulkheads, though. Gotta give the AI credit, they do design some slightly better ships. As far as their pen, ability to pen me, 25 and dropping. My ability to pen them, 35 and increasing. So, as planned, the closer I get, the more effective I become with my armor. Alright, now we can switch to AP again. Because now I think I can get a decent hit. Oh, there they go. They're turning out. Never mind, switch back to high explosive. Destroyed funnel, yes. Now all we need is some damage to their engines. Now, um, another comment that I got quite a bit, and this is on episode 2. Do you not see that one of your launchers got destroyed? Um, I can see it sort of on the design over here, the lower chart, where you got this bow tube destroyed. So the Canada's bow launcher has been destroyed. It is, especially when more of these sections have been lit up, it's pretty damn difficult for me to see. Simply because I am colorblind. So the distinction between this part's been destroyed and, for example, the hull section has been damaged is very difficult for me to see. So if I don't see it, uh, you can shout at the screen all you like. You can uh, respond in the comments, but there's a good chance that I simply don't see it. This time around, I did catch it, but if you look at it now... Yes, the launcher is damaged, and it sort of sticks out there on the top 
well, let's say damage control panel as well. But it is ever so slight. So I really don't have a lot to go on. How are you guys doing so much damage? This is getting pretty annoying. What speed is the Wetton doing? 18 and a half. She's almost doing full speed. I need to be maintaining my distance. Because I'm not at all interested in losing this target. There you go. Have some flooding. Have some flooding. I do like how the stern turret is inadvertently a 360 turret. It can turn in every direction. And this makes it very comfortable to go and turn broadside or turn port and then quickly swing back to starboard. Because I know that that gun can pretty quickly acquire the target. As opposed to having to swing all the way around. So right now I can swing to port. Get the stern gun involved. If only for one salvo. There you go. Destroyed secondary tower. And now I can swing right back. Reducing the angle of attack, and thereby getting more effective armor. So the Wetton lost her secondary tower. Her accuracy is 15%. My accuracy is double that, at 30. Her crew is seasoned. Interesting. These guys have been through some fighting. Or at least, I think so, but I don't recall having seen the Wetton before. Conning tower damaged. That's not good. That's going to come at the expense of accuracy. Increase to flank. I'm going to try and get closer. And hit them with my sword. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to throw a torpedo at them. Well, albeit not from the bow launcher. Structural integrity 90% versus 74% for them. But with these increased bulkheads, the fires that are normally set are completely ineffectual. Because the Wetton is so well compartmentalized that if a section catches fire, it immediately gets put out. So this is one of those ships that you're just going to have to kind of brute force your way to sink. Instead of relying on uh, overwhelming the enemy damage control part with fires. It simply doesn't work. So there is a fire here under the stern turret. But... I think that's about it. That's the only fire that I can currently see. Oh, Canada. How did you miss that? 1800 meters out. Come on. Based on what I can see, um, I somehow destroyed or damaged their bow launcher. I'm not exactly sure how I pulled that off. But their bow launcher is gone. Uh, they're starting to lose quite a few casemate guns as well. Which is good, because it means that the Canada is not going to take as much fire damage. The question remains, how effective is their stern launcher? Because the Canada, at full speed, is not particularly well equipped to turn. I do expect her to be not as fast. There you go, 16 knots. At slightly lower speeds, the Canada is more effective at turning. So we can get a nice action. Oh, come on. Get some accuracy. We got quite a bit of damage here to the funnels. And the secondary tower does not look very happy. Come on. Swing out enough to fire the stern turret. I'm just referring to them as stern turrets. I'm not sure if that's their actual term. Normally it's A, B, X, Y. So... Turret A, turret B, turret A, turret Y. But I'm not sure if that goes the same way with these ships. Flooding. There you go. That's three compartments flooding. Very nice. Very nice. I'm still not seeing any damage to the stern torpedo launcher. Provided that they have one. Yeah, they have one. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that thing. 24% chance to pen that. I've exposed a lot of my ship so far. I need to turn back. More damage to, well, everything. Especially the main tower is what I want to try and kill today. Because the sooner that thing dies, the less damage control they have. Canada's accuracy, 45%. 
Ideally, I would destroy their stern turret, but that's not really something that I really have a say in. It's not like you can target specific subsystems on the ship. That would be definitely a nice quality of life upgrade. Being able to target specific areas and going, yeah, I want to destroy that. Like this. Oh, no. Well, that's uncomfortable. Um, yeah. This is the second time in two episodes that this has happened. I may need to do something about my barbette armor. But I think in the current version of the campaign, there's no overhauling your ships. There's no ability to pull them into dry dock and give them more barbette armor or an additional torpedo launcher or, I don't know, better range finders or what have you. It sucks, but I'm going to have to live with these ships as they are. And, of course, design new ones as more technology becomes available. Have you suddenly grown a pair? What the hell? Look at that ship suddenly come at me. Slow down all the way. The weapon's bow torpedo launcher is out. There you go. There's a bit of flooding for you. I think we're going to have a torpedo exchange here. Please tell me the starboard launcher is at least still functional. Another bow hit. Come on, Canada. Before there's no Canada left. Come on. I know I'm completely broadside to this ship, but I don't really have a lot of options. Torpedo launcher is definitely not effective. Okay, in this case, let's change tactics. Let's turn broadside. Oh, sorry, turn to port. And so far as the rudder can still do that. And try and get the stern launcher to throw out a torpedo. Considering that her bow launcher is ineffectual. It's destroyed. Oh wow, look at her turn. This is not gonna go too well. We're fairly even for structural integrity. 43 for 40. Torpedo away. It looks like it's going to be right on course to hit the weapon. There you go. There's a bit more flooding for you. Um, I can try and turn away from the enemy. But I still want this thing dead. It is one of their six battleships. The issue is I cannot really expose too much of the bow anymore. Because I have issues with most major systems on the ship. Um, another torpedo impacted. Perfect. What was that? Your stern launcher? Her buoyancy is dropping. 35. 34. They do seem to have it under control fairly well. I'm not sure if I can win this fight. Destroyed another casemate. Fire set. Buoyancy holding at 34%. Structural integrity holding at 25%. Oh, Canada. This is not how I had imagined this fight to go. Looks like the weapon's dead in the water. She's, yeah, 0.6 knots. I know I'm once again exposing too much of the ship. But I need to try and get closer because my torpedoes are probably the only effective way that I have of sinking her. And yes, that means I'm blocking the stern turret with the whole ship. Still not seeing any damage to her stern torpedo launcher, so I might eat a torpedo. Which will not do a lot of wonders for my structural integrity, but the Canada has some left. And she has a lot of buoyancy left, so even if I take a torpedo in the worst case, I'll probably survive. Another fire. They have lost 30% of their crew. Which means that they have less fire control, sorry, less damage control going on. And the fires are starting to tick up, but it's still about 10% of their total damage, so it's not that serious. And they do have a torpedo blister, right? Yeah, anti torp 1. A bit of damage 23%, 34% buoyancy holding. The stern turret is once again available. 
I'm sort of zigzagging my way towards the target. I'm trying to use whatever's left of my armor to negate as many shells as possible. And I'm still doing 10 knots. She's still dead in the water. I think her engine compartments have been completely flooded. Now. Damn it. More flooding. Is the starboard launcher available? Ideally, though, I would hit them in the bows. The angle of attack here is pretty terrible. But let's just throw it out and see what happens. Because any structural integrity damage is also very welcome. I'm thinking the starboard torpedo launcher is no longer with us. Weapons down to 18% structural integrity. Hard to port? Oh no. Switch to Alter Selector. We can probably pen them at this range. Even though it's still fairly. Ow. Fairly even. 50 50. Good hit. More flooding. That's the rudder compartment gone. Ow. Please tell me the Stern Torpedo Launcher is available. Canada is dead in the water. Come on. Torpedo the Wetton. There we go. Torpedo away. Unfortunately, it's going to hit an already flooded compartment. So it'll just reduce structural integrity even more. But it won't really kill her. The hit from the, se from the, the secondary turret will. Because her buoyancy is dropping. But Canada, oof. 28% structural integrity, 62% buoyancy remaining. This was not a good fight. She won, however. And that means that the Canada gained 0.73 XP. I'm still not exactly sure what that means. Whether they have gone up a level or whether you need 10 or 100 XP to gain, I don't know. Anyway, um, the Canada is going to take a little bit of time to repair. Let's see exactly how much time we're going to need. Because this was a lot of damage. Seven months. I don't like that this needs to be ticked every single time. I don't like that at all. This needs to be saved. This needs to be added in the save file. Anyway, we have sunk another one of the German battleships. So the strategy can continue. We can also see where their ships are. They have, interestingly, two battleships left in Kiel. There's a lot of their fleet strength over there. Hamburg has a bunch of heavy cruisers. Bremen has a battleship. And Emden has a battleship. I'm not sure exactly what the range is on their battleships. But if they are stuck in Kiel, they might not make it out to the North Sea. I'm not sure what their range is. Oh, and they got another one in Danzig. And a torpedo boat guarding Pilau. So it's not that bad. I'm still bleeding quite a bit of monthly funds. But that's fine. I still have a bunch left. And if you look at my war score, I'm looking at 11,000 versus 1,800. What you got there? Another single versus single battleship. The King Edward VII versus the Kronprince. Looks like a royal battle. Or maybe I should say a battle royale. Let's have him find the enemy. Speaking of, hello, here's the enemy. Let's see if I can do better this time around. And reduce their numbers from 5 to even 4 battleships. At this range, if I can hit them, I can potentially get a deck pen. Sadly, that works both ways, because my deck armor... <laughs> oof. Four deck, one inch. Aft deck, one inch. It's not particularly heavily protected. Mostly because I'm expecting that we cannot hit them at long range anyway. Same design, right? Yeah, a whole bunch of secondaries. And I think they were, what, 9 inches? Yeah, 4 9 inches. Now, normally I don't like it when they're crossing my T. But in this case, I don't actually mind. Because they're exposing a lot of their broadside. Which allows the King Edward to potentially pen them. There's the confidence. Chance to pen. 40%. 
Blonde Prince, regular trained crew. This means that the crew training of the King Edward VII is better. Come Prince, 50-50 chance to pen. In reverse, they can pen me, but the chance is far lower. And, yeah, here we go again. They are turning away. Switch back to high explosive. Oh, come on. Ah, there you go. Damage to one of the funnels. Once again, if I can incapacitate the ship by knocking out her funnels, I'll gladly do so. Destroyed funnel. Perfect. Destroyed secondary gun. She's already taken 3% of crew losses. That's good. The less crew they have, the better. Now my accuracy is 30%, their accuracy is 17%. They're not completely ineffective. And those 4-inch guns can set a couple of fires on the King Edward. More concerningly, they'll knock out the main and the secondary tower, leading to a severe loss of accuracy. Oh, this is one of those fights where I would love to have the new Vanguard class. Because the new Vanguards have those two bow turrets. They'd be able to bring a lot more firepower to bear against the Kron Prince than the King Edward VII can. For the moment... Destroyed secondary tower, yes. For the moment, this fight's already going a lot better than the one with Canada. Because the Canada, at this point, had taken quite a bit of damage, whereas the Kron Prince has not really been able to inflict a lot of damage against the King Edward. If any, 26 damage versus 361 done. Come on, buddy. Also, it seems that her damage control ability is not as good as the other one, even though it's exactly the same ship class. But I think that we're looking at the difference between the regular cr trained crew and seasoned sailors. And it's starting to show. Look at that. Well, not that much to see with the smoke screen in the way. <laughs> so what do they see? What does the Kron Prince see when they look back? They see something on the horizon that's spitting an awful lot of shells. They're firing back with a lot of four inches. But so far, the four inches are not proving to be very effective. More flooding and damage control is required in the rudder compartment. Torpedo destroyed. Yeah, I just couldn't tell you which one. If you guys can see what that is, let me know down below in the comments because I actually can't see it. I can see if destroyed a secondary. I've destroyed the funnel, I've destroyed the secondary tower. But what torpedo launcher was damaged in that attack? I don't know. There, another torpedo launcher destroyed. Bow launcher. Again, how my shells hit that? I don't know. Because the bow launcher's over there, right? All the way on the far end of the bow. I'm engaging the starboard side, sorry, the port side of their ship. How am I hitting the torpedo launcher in the bow? I don't know. She does probably still have the ability to launch torpedoes with different tubes. Her speed? 16 knots. Hmm. Thank you, very nice. Very nice, very nice. More flooding. It's going to slow her down, hopefully to 15 knots. King Edward, despite um, still operating at flank speed, which is generally not great for your accuracy, is capable of landing a lot of hits. She's turning broadside. Let's set the game to select auto shells. The game thinks it's confident enough to use a P. Shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, 
If the game is confident enough to use armor piercing, then we're gonna fire armor piercing. This will hit this torpedo. This will hit. It's gonna suck. We're gonna just suck it up, starboard side, whatever. We got torpedo blisters for particularly this reason. Now, let's return the favor and throw out a torpedo using the bow launcher. Unfortunately, the Kronprinz, with her lower speed, is probably going to be able to dodge that. At least in normal circumstances. But her torpedo... No, her rudder has been damaged. And it hits her right in the bows. That's fantastic, because that's a very difficult section for me to hit, and I would love flooding there. Let's turn to starboard and bring the port launcher to bear. As well as hopefully continue to do damage to their primary tower. So that their damage control is even worse. And their damage control is pretty torn to... Well, what part of the ship to fix now? Because the whole ship is on fire. King Edward. Do you still have your port launcher? Yes, you do. And now I'm exposing a lot of the ship again. But they only have that 9-inch gun on the stern. There's another torpedo hit. Kronprinz, down to 29% structural integrity. Fires are raging all over the ship. Buoyancy is dropping to 34%. Unfortunately, the Prince... Oh, sorry, the King Edward is struggling to get her engines back online because those compartments have been flooded. Another section has been flooded. Or at least we've inflicted flooding, but I think... No, it must have been one of those stern, stern compartments. We've lost 4% of our crew. They've lost 26% of theirs. Another flooding hit, yet no flooding has been inflicted. The, uh, still, the amount of fires is actually pretty low. The amount of fire damage is not that impressive. Um, based on their damage control, I'm not seeing their stern torpedo out of action. What could... Well, hold on. This could be it. That little thing over there. That could be it. And it, it's... I don't know. It could be red? At any rate, my bow torpedo launcher is still functional. But they're dodging. Crap. Fine. We're gonna swing back to port. And get another torpedo launcher on the starboard side. Provided that it's not been destroyed. But I haven't seen any evidence of that. Nope, there it is. Another impact. Structural integrity down to 8%. Buoyancy is probably gonna drop. Significantly, with these two compartments being flooded. Now, when it comes to accuracy, let's have a look. There it goes, the main tower. Perfect. Um, I have fired a lot of shells. These things have had a 56% hit percentage. That is impressive. This is era? 56% is fantastic. Their accuracy has been 16% and 11% for the 4-inch guns. My 6-inch guns have had double that, at 27%. And I think this last bit of high explosive damage is going to be enough to sink her. She cannot put those fires out and they will eat the ship up. And yes, the King Atward will take some time in the dry dock. But it's not going to take as much time in the dry dock as it will to take uh, the German Empire to build an entire new battleship. So, victory. Let's see... At this point, I have quite a few ships in repair. I got the Canada, the Malaya, which is done next month, and the King Edward for three months. That's fine. And in five and seven months, we got the Interdector, Warspite, Albemarle, Vanguard, St. Vincent, and Redoubtable. All right. War score, 12,942 versus 1,889. I'm hoping that with the addition of my new ships, I'll be able to blockade Germany and force them into a surrender. I'm not sure if it's going to work yet, and we we'll first have to survive another couple of months, uh, and then we have to probably plow our way through a whole bunch of secondary ships. That'll be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll see you soon for more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts.